We hope you enjoy listening to this weekly podcast from Lifeline Church. Find out more by visiting lifelinechurch.co.uk. Very, very interesting looking from here. There's a kind of light and bright side. And there's the poor people living in... Ah, oh, look, that's better. Yes. Yes. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> He's always got a scripture for something, you know. All right, so uh, this morning we're delighted to have Albert Kitcher with us. Uh, in a minute, he's going to come and share. Yeah. Yeah, we can give him a little welcome. Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, just a bit of background for those of you that were probably newer amongst us. Uh, in the network that we were involved in, um, it's all built relationally. And so where, where God joins our hearts with a person or a group, that's where we've built over the years in the different nations. And with Alba, I think it's must be over 20 years. Yeah. And uh, we were, we're younger now than we were then. <laughs> uh, and it's been our joy to work with Alba and to, uh, um, help and support and uh, very very interesting and intriguing things uh work in the children's homes that was significant teams have been from here uh working in the community i remember one occasion where he'd arranged because he does have quite some influence there for a, a lot of professionals to come together uh, for us to talk about parenting uh, and that was that was an interesting situation so we really appreciate having him here we're going to hear something of uh, what's been happening and then Albert's going to share something from the word with us so welcome Albert Right, Albert's been staying with us, so I thought I would try to uh, get some of the stories out of him. Um, Albert, we've, we've been seeing what's been going on in the news, so can you tell us a little bit about your family's story um, as the war kicked off in Ukraine and how they got out? Oh, you've not got a microphone yet. No. He is there. Let's, let's get you suited up now. Good. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. Good. Yeah. Is it on? Yeah, thanks. Happy? Yeah, it's on. They're happy. Yeah, they're good. Right, okay. So, I'll start again. Um, tell us a little bit about how your family got out of Ukraine when the war started. Well, um, when the war started, um, I was in a different location, and the rest of my family, my wife, and the kids were in Kiev. So, we had this information that we need to move out. So I told my wife, well, get the car and start going towards um, Poland. So they started their journey, but they couldn't make it that far because of interceptions on the way a bridge was you know, blasted and they had to come back. So they spent another day trying to get another route, but the long and short, they ended up in Romania. Okay, but along the way, uh, they left the car behind. That's right. And, um, and you'd managed to get a bus together for students, yeah? And there was a special guy who kind of found a special way through. Tell us a little bit about your relationship with him. Well, um, we had to evacuate um, students because I'm responsible for all the students from Ghana and Ukraine. So the government has said, make sure you get everybody out. So I was thinking through who to call and I remembered a time I met a guy um, in detention. And um, in course of conversation, I know he's like a sat nav. <laughs> he knows routes and how to get to places. So I called on him and he said, well, we got you. So he organized the bus. And that was when I had to tell my wife, leave the car, join the bus 
and go to safety. Okay, so that that relationship, that helping that guy out, are kind of paid back. Okay, so uh, you'll get out. You've been around all different parts of Europe, kind of like a music tour without the music. Um, but you were in Germany and you went to one of the refugee camps there. Tell us a little bit why you went there and what happened when you were there. Okay, um, I was in a refugee camp in Germany. In fact, I've been to different places in France, in Hungary, in Sweden, in Switzerland since the war um, started. But particularly um, in Germany, when I got um, to the camp, the aim was to see firsthand what is happening to the Ukrainians and people who have evacuated from Ukraine. And when I got there, I realized there was a need to have translations done for um, these people because some of their documents are not even, you know, the usual thing that people are used to. And as I was speaking, somebody who knew me came, oh my goodness, you are here. So they were like, who is this guy? So I have just introduced myself as somebody living in Ukraine and come to see what is happening. Then he said, no, he's the ambassador. So I quickly have to say, not yet. But then they said, then you can tell us about documents. One thing led to another, and the long and short of it was that I am almost working with them. Right, so you, this person who you saw, if I'm remembering the story yeah. right, you didn't really recognize them, but they recognized you. Yeah. And you'd already started being helpful, kind of bit of a man of peace helping doing translation, then you got involved with documents. Yeah. Uh, tell me, there was a lady that came to you, she was troubled? Yes, and um, she, this lady was troubled, you know, thinking about family back in Ukraine and what are the next steps. And she knowing me as belonging to the church, she asked if, you know, we could pray for her people. And we started, I prayed with her. After about five minutes, she brings another lady. The long story short, we got a room and we started praying for Ukraine, for the people there and in other camps. So you got them, you got them to write down the names of the people? Yes. Tell us a bit why you did that. Well, um, I asked them to write the names of the people that they want prayer for, for two reasons. One is with the orthodox kind of background that they have. I know they get names written down, then you could really say prayer and maybe present it somewhere and I needed attention. So I suggested that and it worked very well. And God knows their name. So use their, their beliefs, their traditions to do that. Yeah. And in, in starting to pray with them, you kicked, off, you kicked off with the Lord's Prayer? Yes. You start with yes, that? The Lord's Prayer is a starting point because once you pray the Lord's Prayer, the Lord is with you. So I say, let us pray, our Father. I thought somebody would continue, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's sort of... It's, it's disappointing. Know, it happens all the time. <laughs> 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 okay. So you started off praying for people, for, but actually you're still meeting and still connecting. So you've got a group there yeah. in, in the refugee in camp, the camp that are meeting yes. on a weekly basis. Yes, or? they are meeting once a week and um, to pray for Ukraine, for the situation. And it has almost, you know, evolved into because the focus was Ukraine. But now they tend to see broader. We're not only praying for Ukraine, we're even praying for Russia, praying for everybody because we need to have the peace of God in this situation. Okay. That's good. Well, there's lots more that I'd like to ask Albert about, but I know he wants to speak on some things and I don't want to give his things away. But I think just getting that sense of the ground being cleared and prepared for something. I think it'd be exciting to see what happens next. Okay, thank you so much. And um, greetings once again. Thank you, John and Don and everybody for this opportunity. Um, it's been a really um, good time, I would say. And um, I'll be sharing from different um, perspectives because uh, we have come out of a situation that is still ongoing developing but i think with god he always shows us what is coming god always prepares us for the next level so um, what he is doing is that in the midst of the tumor in the midst of the problems in the midst of the war we know there's going to be an end one day and we are 
trying to find our way to the other side. And I believe that when God speaks, it is always what he wants to do. Um, I'm not making progress yet. Yeah, so you can see um, it's about we being called to make impact. And the word of God can be trusted at all times. At all times, the word of God can be trusted. Because when a word comes out from the mouth of God, it's like a bullet that has gone out from a gun. It's going to hit a target. And God says, what I say, I do. Um, we have to hold on to that word and make it happen. We have to catch that word and run with it. So God had spoken and proud to the war happening, um, many places in Ukraine and different areas, there was this sense of a revival, something new that is going to happen. How it's going to happen we don't know, but in one day, we found churches, people dispersed all over the territories of the globe. Not only Europe, there are people who have gone to Africa, there are people in India, there are people in America, there are people all over the world who are products of the effects of the war. Everybody left with what they have. What I mean is the values, the principles, what you are made of is what you get out with. But there is definitely a coming back. Going to scripture, the Bible says in the book of Zechariah that now I will not treat the remnant of these people as in the former days, says the Lord of hosts. When God says, I'm not going to do something like I used to do it, it means what he used to do is past and gone. So we must be in expectation of something new. The old is obsolete, the new is approaching. God has spoken and it will come to pass. So in my situation, I left Ukraine I wish I could live on day two. I wish I could live on day three. But responsibility requires that I make sure the last person that I'm responsible for leaves. The government of Ghana thought they are my priority. I can say this openly because I told them. Uh, my priority is what said the Lord. <laughs> And God says, save everybody. So in course of trying to get all the citizens out, I'm responsible for community members. I'm responsible for people I've come in contact with. I'm responsible for anybody who needs help. And like when I was talking uh, with Daniel, he said, you know, how did you get the people out? We got friends based on old relationship, not necessarily in the kingdom, but these are people who have expertise of how to move from one place to the other in times of trouble. When you can't go by air, you walk. When you can't walk, you swim. When you can't swim, you do something else. <laughs> and those people become handy. It's a new day. It's a new thing. And God says that for the seed, that, uh, the seed shall be prosperous in the vine, shall give its fruit, the ground shall give an increase, and the heavens shall give their due. I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all these. There is a remnant. There are people in Ukraine right now. When you are in Ukraine, you have a different view. The moment you step out of the border, you get another view. When you sit in front of the television, you see something different. When you talk to people who are on the front, there is another perspective. How do we get the whole panoramic view of what is happening? I watch the TV, I speak to people on the front, I speak to people from both sides of the conflict, and then putting all together, the question is, what is God looking for? 
All things will work together for good to everyone that is called by God and according to his purpose. So our relationship with God is very key in this time. God wants us to live a life of impact. We need to impact our world. How do I continue impacting my world in the midst of the trouble? The only way to do that is to look beyond. I will be speaking to my brothers and sisters from Ukraine. I will be speaking to my brothers and sisters, friends in the UK. I will be speaking to everybody because we are all involved in this. And for us, it's beyond a war. For us, it's beyond a conflict. For us, it's beyond a situation of, you know, sadness and pain and people leaving stuff behind. We have been taught, at least I know, one of the things that connecting with John and with the Lifeline Network built in me was the sense of journey, not staying and living in one destination and not to you know, crowd my life with stuff. So it was easier for me to leave things behind knowing that there is something better ahead of me. I still have friends in Ukraine who could not leave because there were so many things tied to them. But God wants us to make impact. And how can we do that? We can do that when we change our lives when we change our perspectives, when we begin to see in a new way. It is very, very important for each and every one of us to understand there is a new day. We have not come for a conference. I wish we had beautiful week, you get impacted, you go to Ukraine three months down the road, you have not even finished unpacking what you've received. But here I find myself in the UK, living here for maybe six months, one year, I don't know how long. And one day there will be a call to go back. If I go back the same way I came, there is something wrong. If I remain the same way I am, then somebody is not working here. And if this place we used to and call or it is to a very great extent, our Jerusalem, <laughs> a place we come to to receive so we can go back and be effective. If truly this is the place, then coming to reside here means I have great opportunity to be better. My dream is for all who have come from Ukraine, who stay here to receive and get, you know, vaccinated, inoculated, you know, pickled into the culture and the DNA of what we believe as a network lifeline. So that the day we get back to Ukraine, operations continues. Nothing is going to start when you get back. Things are going to continue. It can be six months, it can be one year. So how do I live daily? And that is why when I look at the makeup of people that are here, especially from Ukraine that I know, I can see peace out, I can see faith action, I can see so many, you know, giftings and talents, but how are we going to honor this? I know the reception is good. I know, you know, the love is being shown, but we are on an assignment. And it's not easy to host people, but you have done great. Looking at what happens in other countries, I have been in a camp, and um, a room four times this size housing is actually an exhibition hall that have been converted into you know living premises for people it's now over three months that people have been living in that condition they're not in a home they're not having the comfort of what you know is being done here 
And one of the things that I, when I go back, I would also like to share with the people in the other side is to begin to learn some of the practices that we experience here in the UK. Because families hosting people brings another dimension of what it is. Seeing mass people in a big hall, you know, trying to get their lives together, is not easy. But then when I go there and I start talking with them, I let them understand this is my home for this time. And as the people of God journeyed, they were living in tents, which means it's not a permanent place. What can I do to be more effective? The Bible still tells us that God is saying that there is vessels that remain in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah. He said, they shall be carried to Babylon, and there they shall be until the day I visit them, says the Lord. Then I will bring them and restore them to this place. When I read this uh, scripture, I realized that um, in every part that refugees are received, they are received on a temporary protection basis, which means the mindset should be, one day I'll go back. I cannot go back the same way I left. I cannot go back thinking the same way. And it dawns on all of us, those receiving, those who are received, and what we take back with us. For me, the word restore brings a lot of hope. Obviously, there could be some who will never go back because they will be planted and they might be the connection that will build a better bridge for the continuation of what God wants to do. But in the meantime, these vessels, he said, were found in the house and now taken to Babylon so that maybe it will be kept back then, there will be a restoration. When I was in um, Switzerland, there was a particular situation with foreign students, because they were not considered in the whole program of the integration. And some really are coming from backgrounds where they cannot go back to their countries. So I had to approach one of the officers and say, please, do you choose to send this guy back to his country and hear on the news that his head is cut off as soon as he got there? Or would you rather keep him and find ways of getting a better solution to him? He said, the second one is best. I said, but we can't go above the law. You need to make a new law to cancel the old law. How do we do that? We had to change their names from students from Ukraine to desperate people in need of shelter. So in one hour, we found shelter for them. And then we now try to define what is right. It's not in the law, so we got to sit down. Just last week, they found a resolve. One university is interviewing students and trying to see how best they can place them. For me, it means we being effective where we are. People of faith, we face a challenge right now. And the challenge is, how do we still keep on shining in the midst of the trouble? There are so much, you know, potentials that we can use for what God is doing. Sorry, I'll be giving too many scriptures, but this will be the last one, I promise you. <laughs> so that says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. For some reason, I'm not so much concerned about now because I know God is looking at tomorrow. There is going to be a definite rebuilding of Ukraine. The Ukraine we knew does not exist. The community I led has completed a phase. And it will be sad to still think 
we have a community like it used to be. It's a new day. What is the brother who I've gone to France coming back with? After one year, he might be speaking French. Now it means we will not be you know, effective if we put five languages together like we do in church in you know, Ukraine. We have a special service for Ukrainians. Then we have for the internationals, three languages, French, English. You know, so you speak for 40 minutes, but actually you speak for 10 minutes. <laughs> but now we can have French, Spanish, English, anything. This is what I am looking at. A person leaves Ukraine in the second year, he comes back and he's in the third year and he's speaking French, plus better understanding of medicine, best practices. I'm looking at that. And take advantage, some of these people who have come, they came with something good that can be beneficial. It's not like home. I find myself running from one place to another. Yesterday, I ran into a problem. I sneak into London. Somebody saw me. He went and told the ambassador I'm in town. And I said, you must report. I said, I will report after. <laughs> because point one must be sorted out before I see you. And it's very, very interesting because I believe strongly that God is calling us to begin to partner with him in the things that he's doing. Remember, it's a new day. The old notes might not work, but if we can look at what God is doing, we'll be able to get the great thing. I know one thing that Lifeline does is to impact individuals and influence systems. Am I right? Impacting individuals and influencing systems. How can we make that you know, reality? I told um, Jamie and I told John, when I'm in places, because I'm looking at a broader picture, I usually would say, and that is true, that some of the things I'm sharing, I learned them from attending a conference in the UK organized by Lifeline Projects. What is Lifeline Projects? My ambassador. I know he's gone online looking at what life, because I told him I'm here to visit because Lifeline is hosting Ukrainians and, you know, helping out. And he asked, so are any of our citizens there? I said, no, they are waiting for you to put in a word for them, then they would be allowed. <laughs> and it can work. Yeah, because for now, it's not possible to get, you know, non-Ukrainians who have suffered the same thing that every Ukrainian suffered to be grafted in. But maybe his voice would go further. So I kept lifeline, 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 lifeline. What is this lifeline that this guy wants to put me at number two and deal with them? I am consciously doing that because I know when he gets interested, and he, I know he has asked somebody, go check on what is happening. Yesterday, he made somebody drive me to where I'm staying to be sure I'm there. And who was that person? The head of security. <laughs> it felt good, but at the same time, I am continuing what I believe God is in. So we have to be very strategic and really look at the big picture. I am very, very sure that whatever we are doing and planning, it's still early days, but God can help us. He will help us, and he will make sure that we influence the systems, we impact the you know, individuals. And because we have to be impacted, I must make myself ready. There would be some shocks. There would be stuff that might not be the same. But you cannot bring maybe Ukraine here, or you cannot bring a fight back in Ukraine. Um, the other day in Hungary, I was there last week, and then they were, there was a little sort of fight in the camp because 
I'm Russian, I'm Ukrainian. And I got them. I said, aren't you brothers? Love one another. Remember we say love, what? Acceptance and forgiveness. Once again, it solved the matter. Say, can you love him? Can you accept him? Will you forgive him? It didn't happen. Hold each other. Yeah, but he was being too loud. I said, no, he has a very loud voice. <laughs> you know, so it's very, very important that we try to get the best out of the situation. A Syrian refugee came to me in um, Sweden. And he said, do you know, the way they are treating the Ukrainians wasn't the way they treat me when I came here. It looks like they're getting special treatment. Whew. Then I said, no. And he's like, no, it's true. I said, no, no, no. You know, you were, excuse me to say, like the guinea pig, the training, they have gotten better after working with you and they've improved the services. I guarantee you, if you were to come back again, you will receive same thing. Oh, well, maybe, all right, what am I doing? Because this group of people are developing a certain kind of hatred, either for the system or for the people who are receiving the treatment. There is so much happening behind the scenes that if you don't get involved, you will not know. I'm saying all these things so that when we pray, we understand. And when we deal with people, we should also know. The fact that I'm treated in a different way does not mean I should feel, you know, I'm better. And fortunately or unfortunately, the way the refugees are being treated could create a little sense of entitlement. You must, because I have been in places where uh, some of the refugees have, we don't want to eat the food you've given us. When we were in Egypt, we used to eat pizza. We don't want to drink tea with milk. No. It's not supposed to be like that. We must be able to transform, conform, and you know, when you get to a level ground, then you can begin to flow. It must be fluid. And it is very, very important. Так что нам здесь помогают, а мы не должны просить или требовать. Мы здесь для того, чтобы научиться и потом влиять на наши действия. Так написано воздействие на лиц и что влияние на системы. Давайте, чтобы на вас действовали и чтобы вы повлияли на системы. Yes, my, the last bit of my word, except you are in the flow, you will not understand. But it's for us to understand that nobody owes us, and we also don't owe anybody. But here we are together for a bigger cause. God is at work to perform what is in his heart. I am so happy that out of this problem, within the last two months, God has opened so many doors and so many opportunities. As I speak with you now, when I get back, we, we are based in Sweden, but I'm moving to Germany. So I'll be able to work with some of the camps and also share what I know and extend what I can you know contribute to the past. Sometimes people forget I'm also a refugee from Ukraine. They feel, I, they feel I'm part of, you know, yes, I'm part of the solution, but I still need to be taken care of. I remember there was a celebration in Sweden and you know they had these fireworks and the moment you know the sound boom boom boom, then the kids were looking for where to hide. I realized these kids are not yet stable. So we need to start working once again. But God has been so good to us, and God will visit us, God will perform his work to us, and God will restore us. We are here for such a time as this. I am so happy and so thankful personally 
I want to thank, you know, John and Dawn and Lifeline for accepting our people. I know some will be going, but some will come back. Don't get surprised. But we are working and trusting God that this will be the beginning of something unprecedented that will continue to build a stronger, stronger bridge between us. Thank you so much, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's pray with Albert. We thank God for all the way he's using. You know, I was sitting there thinking, how would I describe Albert's method? Wily. <laughs> he's got a certain way about him, hasn't he? Yeah. But also God enables and equips him. He is in a very important and key role. Um, he, he's, as he said, uh, somebody saw him and next thing he knows the ambassador requires him and then he's got to go again uh, today to meet somebody uh, in the embassy. And uh, yeah, he is in a key role and he has great opportunity for influence, but it also will be um, a target. And so I think we want to just stand with him and pray with him. There's more to hear. Um, he's aiming to come back at some point in August, but everything's a bit fluid at the moment. Uh, but let's just pray God's direction and protection. Good, let's stand together. Father, we lay hands on our brother Albert now. Lord, we thank you for him. Lord, we thank you for these years of, of fellowship. But Lord, now, together with him, we feel thrust into an open door, an opportunity. And Lord, let us know your grace and your way as we seek to join together. And we lift Albert before you. We pray, Lord, your protection, your guidance, even as we thank you for what you have done. Lord, taking him from those days in a bunker, safely bringing him through and his family. Lord, we give you thanks. But now, Lord, going forward, we say, will you direct his footsteps? Will you illuminate the path that he should take? Yes for him and his family and our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and here from Ukraine. Lord, we pray your guidance and your direction. Lord, we dare to believe that perhaps we've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Lord, have your way. Allow, Lord, and release your anointing upon Albert. Grant him, Lord, wisdom above the natural. Connections beyond the natural order his footsteps lord in the name of jesus amen amen thank, thank you, you john Robert. thank you I, I just want to say you know i came here also having a question that i wanted to ask john so that i get a feedback and when i met him in like three minutes we got the answer and um I'm very thankful. You have John with you here on a daily basis. Please, please tap from the well of wisdom. I came all the way to ask him to guide, and I knew God was a guiding through him. So once again, thank you, John, for helping us for the next step. Thank you for listening to this podcast by Lifeline Church. We hope this message has been an encouragement to you. We are a relational church with a passion to demonstrate God's love to one another and our surrounding community in real and practical ways. We believe that God has called us to have an impact on our families, our communities and our nation. We'd love to connect further with you, so please do visit our website at lifelinechurch.co.uk, on Facebook, lifeline.church.uk or Twitter at Lifeline UK.